Whatever trace of brooding is there of pain, whatever trace of reminiscing is there of the world, whatever trace of remembering is there of desire, whatever trace of remembrance of impurities, whatever trace of recollection is there of sin, whatever trace of recapitulation is there of mind, whatever trace of initiative there is, it is defined as the great disease. Whatever wit of idea there is, is said to be the great delusion. Whatever wit of idea there is, is said to be the triad of afflictions. Whatever wit of idea there is, is said to be lust and anger. Whatever wit of idea there is, is said to be attachment and naught else. Whatever wit of idea there is, is said to be all sorrowful. Whatever wit of idea there is, is said to be the misapprehension of the reality of the world. Whatever wit of idea there is, is nothing but a great fault. Whatever wit of idea there is, is said to be the three periods of time. Whatever wit of idea there is, is said to be name and form. Whatever conception there is, is said to be the gross world.
Whatever wit of idea there is, is said to be verily unreal. Whatever wit of idea there is, is said to be the world, no doubt. Whatever wit of idea there is, is said to be naught. Be certain of this. Mind alone is the whole world. Mind alone is the great adversary. Mind alone is transmigration. Mind alone is the threefold world. Mind alone is great sorrow. Mind alone is aging, etc. Mind alone is time and mind itself is taint. Mind alone is will. Mind alone is the individual. Mind alone is pollution, ever. Mind alone is magic. Mind alone is illusion, always. Mind is like the son of a barren woman. Mind itself never exists. Mind is itself inert always. Mind is verily thought, and mind is egoism only. Mind alone is great bondage. Mind alone is the inner faculty. Mind alone is the earth, and mind alone is water. Mind alone is light, and mind alone the mighty wind. Mind alone is space, and mind alone is sound.
Mind alone is of the nature of touch. Mind alone fabricates forms. Mind alone is the form of essence. Mind alone is eulogized as smell. The sheath of food is of the form of mind. The sheath of vital air is full of mind. The sheath of thoughts is of the form of mind. The sheath of intellect is full of mind. Mind alone is the sheath of bliss. Mind alone is the waking state. Mind verily is the dream state, and mind alone is the deep sleep state. Mind itself is the gods and others. Mind alone is the eight limbs of yoga. Whatever little there is, is mind only. Mind alone is full of mind. The cosmos is full of mind. The city of the body is full of mind. The being is full of mind. This duality is full of mind. This species is full of mind. This attribute is full of mind. This scene is full of mind. This insentience is full of mind. Whatever there is, is full of mind. That which exists as individual is full of mind. Thought alone is ignorance. Thought alone is difference. Thought alone is knowledge. Thought alone is pairs of opposites. Thought alone is time. Thought alone is space. Thought alone is body. Thought alone is life force. Thought alone is contemplation. Thought alone is listening ever.
Thought alone is hell. Heaven, too, is thought only. Thought alone is consciousness. Thought alone is contemplation of the self. The triviality is thought only. Brahman is thought only. Whatever trifle there is, is thought alone. That is not ever. Thought is naught, naught alone. The three worlds are naught, naught indeed. The guru is naught, naught indeed. So too is the disciple, truly naught. The body, too, is naught, non-existent. The mind is not at all existent, ever. Even a trifle is naught, naught ever. The whole world is naught, naught. The beings indeed are naught, naught indeed. Everything is non-existent indeed, no doubt. This chapter, titled All is Naught, is revealed to you by me. Whoever hears this even once becomes Brahman himself.